All right, day six of the Olympics. It's been a fun meet so far, but three great final sessions still to go. This is John Lowe from Swim Vortex. I'm David Reader from Swimming World. We're here in the main press center at Barra Olympic Park, and we're going to discuss what's, what's been going on in the pool, John. Uh, I think the best place to start, the men's 200 butterfly final from Tuesday night, Michael Phelps winning his 20th gold medal in a very emotional fashion. Yeah, it was vintage Phelps. Uh, anybody who was paying attention to the coverage knows that he was going into a race in a showdown with South Africa's Chad Leclerc. Leclerc's the guy that knocked him from the pedestal four years ago in London. If anybody was watching, they saw a little uh, shenanigans going on in the ready room. Leclerc shadow boxing in proximity to Phelps, even shaking his legs out really close. Michael's face said it all. He was ticked, and the last thing you need to do is tick off the greatest Olympian of all time. We've been saying, you don't, don't poke the tiger. Well, when we saw Michael come into the finish, take a half stroke to get to the wall, his celebration, it, it just revealed how much that meant to him. He was yeah. up on the lane line. I can't ever remember seeing Michael celebrate on a lane line. He gave a little, uh, a little bring it to me type of reaction. Mm -hmm. That gold medal meant a ton to him, but I think for a great deal of the reason, was because he was he was challenged. He was called out. When are these guys going to learn? You don't call out Michael Phelps. An Australian legendary coach Don Talbot did it years ago when he said, "Oh no, Ian Thorpe's the greatest in the world." Michael reels off a ton of uh, ton of medals. Kavik, Michael Cavage calls him out in two, 2009 um, yeah. in the whole suit uh, controversy. This is not a guy that needs more motivation. Why do they keep giving it to him? Agreed. And it wasn't like he needed motivation for the 200 fly anyway. After what happened four years ago, when Leclerc touched out Phelps, Phelps was already so motivated in that event just to get that title back. We saw how much it meant last summer in San Antonio when he went 152.9. And, and the kind of neat thing was Phelps didn't have to go that fast. He did what he needed to do, and it was his greatness that got his hand on the wall. And then Leclerc, who we thought was going to swim well after he got the silver in the 200 free, fades all the way to fourth. This fly not really where his freestyle is right now. Um, just a lot of emotion. You saw it from Phelps on the on the um, on the medal stand when he, you saw a tear, and then he broke out laughing when when he heard his friends uh, shout out the O in the national anthem. Uh, it, it was a very it was a cool scene to see Phelps, and then coming back on that relay, um, you know, winning one with its wire and Lochte, right just for Tally Haas. Yeah, the 800 free relay. Real quick before we get into that, though, the other thing I, that was just so satisfying to Michael was I mean, the 200. 200 fly, that's the event that put him on the map. That's the event that started it all. The 15-year-old who yeah. goes to Sydney, finishes fifth, his first world record the next year as a sixth, uh, I don't think still 15. Yeah. So it, it launched him, it's, and he wanted to take his baby back, and that's kind of what he did. Best way to cap, cap off his career with the 200 fly was to win it in that fashion, um, even if the finish was you know, a little bit ugly. Um, but let's talk about Katie Ledecky because well, let's go that 800 free relay. Okay. Quick. We're yeah. talking the relay. Um, Townley Haas. Oh yeah, Townley Haas. To, to split 144-1. We've all we've all thought he's the future of middle distance swimming in the U.S. and that was a, a huge example. He goes in there with three veterans: Phelps, Lochte, Connor Dwyer, Ryan Lochte, Connor Dwyer, and he's the young kid, and he acted like a veteran. He, yeah. he came through like he'd been in that situation before multiple times. It was just a terrific uh, performance. It was, and, the, and he said he got so amped up for the relays. That's part of the reason why the U.S. team is swimming so well this meet, just because of that energy going around the team, and every single swimmer in the mix zone talks about it. But you're right, that was just a glimpse of what Haas can do. Mm -hmm. I think sooner rather than later, he's going to be the best 200 freestyler in the world. That was the fastest split by a lot over James Guy, who again, happens to be the world champion in the event. Um, we're going to see a lot more out of Townley Haas. Now we'll get to Katie Ledecky, who is just still swimming out of her mind. Uh, 153.7, 153.8 in the 200 free, beating Sarah Showstrom in the only race where she was really challenged. Um, she just didn't back down. It, it, with her dominance in the other events, you know, you think, oh, maybe this is the one that she has a shot to lose in, but she just doesn't lose races. And the, the, the key to winning that race was that was going to be the difficult jewel of her Triple Crown. We've been talking for, in the lead up to Rio, you know, Debbie Meyer, 1968, the only person to ever win three freestyle titles at a single Olympics for Katie to make that happen. Everybody knew the 400, the 800 free, even though the 800 hasn't happened yet. Those were the slam dunks. The 200 free is the one where she had to tiptoe through the minefield a little bit, find her way, and it was, it was the one where if something was going to go wrong, that was it. That was she, she just put her will out there, uh, took the lead at the 100, 
and wasn't going to wasn't yeah. going to yield to Sarah Soystrom, who deserves a ton of credit because she Great. she actually outslipped Katie now by 0 .03, 0 .05, little little margins on the last half, but she put together a gutsy race and gave her as much of a push as anybody in the world can do right now. And a nice swim as well for Emma, Emma McKee to get third in that one. But but you're right. Isn't going to beat me 800. Um, and she said she almost threw up. I mean, it's she's a racer. She is not just good. She knows how to race. Um, let's talk very quickly about last night's finals. Uh, the women's 800 free relay, no real surprise to see the Americans winning that race. But the other three, you had no idea who was going to win the race, any of the races. Um, and I think we were surprised pretty much everything that happened. Dimitri Ballandin getting the win in the 200 breaststroke, uh, Maria Belmonte in the 100 fly. But the one that I think is going to reverberate for years, Kyle Chalmers in the 100 freestyle. 47.5, a junior world record, just 18 years old. And he's the best 100 freestyle in the world. They've called Kyle Chalmers uh, in Australia Prince Chalmers for several years now. That nickname kind of came along when he broke some, some age group records while being in Thorpe. Those are some lofty expectations placed on your shoulders when you're when you're lumped into the same sentence as Thorpe. That, that kid was seventh at the turn, but you knew he'd be coming down the stretch as a freight train. That's his MO. That's that's what he does. He reels people in. And he did it to Nathan Adrian. But he wasn't the only shock of that of that event. Silver medal goes to Peter Timmers of Belgium. The last race of his career is what he said. Yeah. He's, he's walking away after this. That's a hell of a way to go out. He said it was a big deal for him to beat Peter Von and Ogenbahn's best time. He trained at the same pool in Eindhoven, and he did by four, by four one hundredths, and that's kind of neat. A very surprising 100 freestyle final of it, Cam McAvoy, out of it. Again, an Australian goes into the 100 free as the gold medal favorite for the third straight games. Eamon Sullivan in 08, James Magnuson in 2012, and doesn't this time doesn't even come close. And Australia still finally gets off the schneid and wins this event for the first time in a long, long time. 48 years, Michael Wendt in yeah. 1968 in Mexico City. That's yeah. They've been waiting for this a long time. A, a quick note on Cam McAvoy. As it was a disappointing swim. We all thought he would be there for, for the gold medal mix. Uh, as much class as I've seen on the deck yeah. in a long time, he Chalmers waited for McAvoy to come out of the pool. When McAvoy came to him, he raised his hand and gave him the point of, you're the man, almost like showing the crowd, here's the man. And Chalmers, you have to say that he's going to be the man for a long time in the 100 freestyle. Yeah, scary. At 18 years old, to, to win a muscle-dominated event where, where strength is such a key in a sprint freestyle, and he had, he has, he's a big boy. But he's not caught up in muscle like some of these other guys. That, who knows what he's capable yeah. of? That event's going to be interesting for a few years now. Adrian, I don't think he's going anywhere. Great swim for him to get the bronze. And then also in that field, two guys who I think could be Thorns and Chalmers Button over the next few years. Santo Condorelli and Caleb Dressel. Big first final experience, especially for Dressel. Sprint freestyle is going to be really fun to watch. Yeah, those three, I think, will be leading the way. Um, let's talk about tonight's four finals on the slate. The women's 200 breaststroke. Again, absolutely wide open. It's going to be curious. Taylor McKeon of Australia is the only one under yeah. 222 going into the final. But really, I, it may be like the men's 200 breast finish was, where you could throw a blanket across the pool and it was going to pretty much capture everybody under it. Um, Yulia Efimova is the X factor, the question Agreed. mark in this. She's taken out her preliminary semifinal very slowly. And just her MO. Not, but not quite as slow as she's been going yeah. out. And then she's been reeling people in. If she gets some early speed, she could take the gold here, and then again, the doping controversy will arise, and she's been part of the, the, that whole theme this week, and uh, who knows who knows what the reaction would be. Ballon didn't won gold in the 200 breast on the men's side from lane 8. I think that's Kira Smith in lane 8, so keep an eye out, just because apparently there's something about the 200 breaststroke this week just totally being anyone's game. The men's 200 backstroke, and I think you and I agree, this will be a great race between the favorite coming in, who is Mitch Larkin, mm -hmm. but no one has looked better this week than Ryan Murphy. Just toyed with that field in his semifinal, which he won last night. He took a bath in the semifinal. He did. Stepped off that last wall, and then he shut it down again. Yeah, he was just strolling, especially the last 25 meters. His turnover rate was just body da Yeah. He, he is in such a good place, 51.97 in the 100. He's carrying the endurance. I, I don't see him losing that race tonight. Uh, and, and Jenny uh, Ryloff. Looks okay, the European champion. He looks looks strong, but I don't think anybody's going to be able to, to stay with Murphy, especially when he shifts over that last half. Yeah, and the, the guy with the highest ceiling to do so is Larkin, who, who says he bounced back okay after the hundred back. Said he didn't get, said he got over it because he knows there's nothing he can do about it now. Murphy says two different strokes, the hundred and the two hundred. Um, but you're right, he has looked really, really solid. The men's two hundred IM. I think the race that everyone wants to see tonight. 
It's Dubs vs. Lochte Part 157, and that's going to be great, but God, Kosuke Aguino could win this race. Well, not only is it part, whatever it is, <laughs> it's the last one. Yeah, it's right? the last one. And uh, anybody in that building tonight has to just savor this moment. We've seen these guys duel, duel since 2004 when they went gold-silver at the Athens Games. They've battled it out at World Championships, at additional Olympiads, and here we are at the, at the last chapter. And uh, you're right, because Kei Higino of Japan, the 400 IM gold medalist from night one, is going to be in the mix. Uh, I'll be shocked if Phelps does not win this thing. I agree with you just because I think once Phelps is on a roll, yeah. he just doesn't lose. Um, and I think we're going to see something good out of him. While we're on the subject, Phelps does have a quick double. He wanted to get in the second semifinal 100 fly. He didn't pull that off. So By an extra five, by an extra five minutes yeah. or so. Um, I think Phelps might not have a premier lane for that final, but one, but he'll get in it. And we saw a trial, so he was in lane seven. Yeah, it, it, as long as he gets through, he, he has about 30 minutes. Yeah. And at 31, that's not what it was for him when he was 19 and 23. But like you said, it, just just grab a lane. Yeah. And preferably not one and eight, but grab one of the be top six and you're, you'll be fine. Yeah, Phelps uh, should be very interesting in that 100 butterfly. In both the 200 IM tonight and the 100 fly tomorrow, we can kind of become the first man to ever win. Four straight golds in one event. First. No one's ever won. First swimmer period. Yeah. Only the fourth person in Olympics history, regardless of the sport. Yeah. No one has even won three in uh, in men's swimming. So we'll see if Phelps can pull that off. Chances are, in one of the two, he will be good. Uh, and then the final race tonight, the women's 100 freestyle. And we think Kate Campbell has a lot left to give. Sarah Schostrom's been looking good. But the one that's most impressed me is Penny Alexiak. 16 years old from Canada. She and Taylor Ruck, the first Olympic medalist period born in the 2000s. Um, I think we both agree Campbell's going to win it, but the fact that what Alexia has done, that what she has done, I think it's scary. Yeah. Tonight's the night that Kay Campbell puts that last piece that she's missing to her sprint dominance. She, she gets her Olympic, her individual Olympic title. But yeah, Penny Alexiak is going to make women's swimming fun yeah. in, in the next few years. She even threw together a 154 and change split on the end of their 800 free relay. Only the medalist did that. To, to secure them the bronze, to secure Canada the bronze medal. She. Not only is she just talented, she she seems like a gamer. Yeah. You gotta love that. You gotta love a girl who feeds off of pressure situations. Just coming through in these wide open finals, the hundred fly, getting ahead of Dana Homer. That split on the relay last night. Uh, you know, in a situation where few expected Canada the medal until like yesterday. Um, it, it's been very, very impressive. The Americans looking a lot better in this event than they than they were at trials. Simone Manuel had a best time in the semis last night, and Abby Weitzel got in there as well, though not looking as good. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see. I doubt they will medal, which uh, will actually be three women's individual races in a row they haven't medaled in. But still, I mean, just just what they've done to get to this point is a big step forward, and it helps their uh, medley really coming to, up. To medal, it'll take about a half second drop at least. Yeah. I would expect 52 mid to be to be what it takes to reach the podium. But that was a positive for Simone in a 53 -1. The question is, can either Simone Manuel or Abby White will get the American record, which has been sitting to Amanda Weir since the suit era, yeah. uh, 53 or 1, I mean, 53-01-02. Um, can they become the first American females to go into that 52 change area? That'd be pretty cool. It needs to happen sooner rather than later. Hopefully, for American sake, it will be tonight. I also have had some prelims this morning, a few semis tonight leading into finals tomorrow. Um, Katie Ledecky, 8-12 and 800 free. I said to you right after, that would win it. It would probably still win it. Um, yeah. well, she, now has the, she now has the 11 fastest times ever. 13 Is that of, it? 13 of 14, 15 of 20. <laughs> and it's just that she only has 15 of 20 because she hasn't had a chance yet to round out the top 20. She'll get there. Eventually. Um, yeah, definitely impressive. Also, Katinka Hose with a very nice uh, 200 backstroke this morning. She'll be going for her fourth Olympic gold medal tomorrow night. Uh, the 100 fly, Joe schooling the top seed. Um, he's going to be a threat for a medal, I think. Sure is. And uh, Andre Govorov in the uh, men's 50. A wide open race uh, with Florent Manadou, not quite at his at the top of this form, but we'll be interested to see how that one turns out. I as well. think, oh, I think Florent Manadou is going to be there in the final. He had a terrific split on the end yeah, uh, yeah. in their 400 freestyle relay. The amazing thing in the 50 free today. 13 out of 16 times for the semifinalists, under 22 seconds. If you go back just one Olympia in 2012, only six guys did that. So the number more than doubled. Yeah, I think we're going to see a fast semi. It was a speed show. Anthony Irvin, terrible finish this morning. We'll see if he can put something together tonight. Uh, I think he's got some speed. And I think he might have a big swim coming up. Um, John, any final thoughts before we sign off uh, from day six here at the Main Press Center? It's just been a terrific, a terrific role. The United States is probably looking at in the range of 30, 32 medals, somewhere yeah. in there. So 
their, their, the momentum they're carrying is, has been unbelievable. All the naysayers that appear to have been proven wrong in the U.S. With this, with this mix of veterans, this new blood, and uh, like I said, veterans and new blood, um, been very impressive. We said this the other day. Uh, every four years we make that mistake of doubting what the U.S. is going to do. This time around, I'm learning my lesson. I won't be doing that in 20. Someone's going to do it in Tokyo. Um. Again, this is John Lowe from Swim Vortex. I'm David Reeder from Swimming World. We appreciate everyone uh, following our coverage all week, watching these videos. John and I enjoy doing them. Uh, it's going to be a great finals tonight. We'll see you back here on Saturday.